What's the bad value of pain? It's due to 2019 number one on gene expression, feedback, and ecological interaction. Oxygen are plant hormones that coordinate several aspects of fruit growth and development. Indole 3 acetic acid, IAA, is an auxin that usually synthesizes from the amino acids tryptophan. Gene trypt T encodes an enzyme that converts tryptophan to indole 3 pyruvic acid, I3PA, which is then converted to IAA by the enzyme encoded by the gene yuck. Uh, what did you just say, Ms. Jones? Don't worry, the figure shows everything. So here I have gene trip T. Um, we're going to go through transcription, make the mRNA, then go through translation to make the enzyme trip T. Here we have gene yuck again, transcription making mRNA, translation to make uh, the enzyme yuck. Tryptophan is going to use the enzyme trip T to make I3PA, which then uses the enzyme yuck to make IAA. So part A asks us to circle the one arrow that represents transcription. Uh, we just said that on the template pathway. So transcription is where we're going to read DNA or read the genes, and then we synthesize an mRNA from it. So there's two different arrows you could have circled here. We could have circled this arrow or this arrow. Um, then it says identify the molecule that would be absent if enzyme yuck is non-functional. So if I don't have this enzyme right here, the enzyme yuck, which is going to speed up the reaction from I3PA to synthesize IAA, then I would expect IAA to actually be absent because I don't have that enzyme to speed up that chemical reaction. So identification of IAA. Students circled the right place. And then they also said if enzyme yuck is non-functional, IAA will be absent. And it doesn't have to be a big, long sentence. And as I always tell my students, if they say to identify, just write a complete sentence. That did not take long for the student to write that full sentence out and ensure that they got that point. Part B is to predict how a deletion of one base pair in the fourth codon of the coding region of trip T would most likely affect the production of IAA and then justify that prediction. So if we have a deletion of one base pair, that's going to shift my reading frame. It's going to make it so that every single grouping, every single codon downstream is going to be different, which makes completely different amino acids or adds different amino acids into that protein. So we make a completely different protein. That protein is not going to be functional. So what that means is I don't have enzyme trip T. And that means that the reaction that's going to speed up or the enzyme that speeds up the reaction of tryptophan into I3PA doesn't occur. So there's less I3PA, which means that there's going to be less IA. So I would expect there to be less IA um, produced. So reduction in the IA production or no production of IAA. And the mutation results in the translation of an inactive non-functional trip enzyme. Um, the mutation will result in no translation of the trip uh, enzyme. Or the mutation will result in no or reduced production of I3PA. So again, using our diagram helps us significantly to answer these questions. So students said the described deletion would likely uh, significantly reduce IAA production. This is because the deletion of the base pair in a gene often causes a frame shift, which alters all subsequent codons in the gene. As the corresponding mRNA is translated, the altered codons append different amino acids than intended, resulting in the trip T enzyme that is non-functional due to a differing primary structure. So part C, explain one feedback mechanism by which a cell could prevent production of too much IAA without limiting I3PA. So we're looking at that pathway right here because we're saying if there's too much of this, what can I do without messing with this step right here? Okay, and it has to do with right here. I can either modify the mRNA or modify the, the actual enzyme. Okay, um, so there could be negative feedback in which we're going to see that IAA is going to inhibit the mRNA um, from, of course, making the enzyme, or we're going to inhibit the enzyme itself. So production of the yuck enzyme is inhibited or the yuck enzyme activity is inhibited. Students said to limit the IAA production without limiting I3PA production, a cell would need a negative feedback loop that prevents enzyme yuck availability in the presence of excess IAA. An example would consist of epigenetic markers produced in the presence of IAA that would prevent transcription of the yuck gene temporarily halting enzyme yuck production. Part D, rhizobacteria are a group of bacteria that live in nodules on plant roots. Rhizobacteria can produce IAA and convert atmospheric nitrogen into forms that can be used by plants. Plants release carbon-containing molecules into the nodules. So what we see is that we've got some type of reaction where the, uh, the bacteria is going to produce um, IAA, which helps to grow those nodules, um, as well as is going to convert the nitrogen for them into forms that the plants can use. And the plants kind of help back by releasing these carbon molecules into those nodules, providing food to the bacteria. So based on the information, identify the most likely ecological relationship between plants and rhizobacteria. 
Um, I just described that one's helping the other and the other is helping each other. So what we see is mutualism. OK, um, so then part B, we asked to say, OK, we'll describe one advantage, the bacteria of producing IAA. If you remember, IAA is an auxin that coordinates the root growth and development. So if that bacteria is producing IAA, it's going to grow that root and it's going to provide more space for that bacteria to live. So it increases its habitat or the number of nodules on the rise of bacteria. Or the bacteria receive uh, carbon-containing molecules as a result of that increased plant growth from that IAA. Students said the most likely ecological relationship between the plants and the rise of bacteria is mutualism. An advantage of bacteria producing IAA is that the host roots will grow and develop in the presence of IAA oxygen, expanding the bacteria's habitat and ensuring the survival of the plant on which it depends. Part E, Whew. a researcher removed a plant nodule and identified several cheetah rise bacteria that do not produce IAA or fixed nitrogen. Describe the evolutionary advantage of being a cheater in the population composed primarily of non-cheater bacteria. Plants can adjust the amount of carbon chain modules released into nodules in response to the amount of nitrogen fixed in the nodule. So what we're seeing is that the cheetah bacteria are going to benefit because of the fact that without producing that IAA or fixing the nitrogen, they're still going to get all the effects and all the benefits. So they have more energy for reproduction that the other bacteria doesn't have because they're providing a, a help or to the actual plant. Then it says predict the change in bacterial population that would cause the plant to reduce the amount of carbon chain molecules provided in the nodule. Well, as I see a decrease in the amount of nitrogen because they're cheater bacteria, um, that's going to decrease the amount that they're going to release into that nodule, as well as a decrease in the amount of nitrogen that gets fixed. Um, all of those can help to make that point. Um, so part E, looking at what the students said, bacterial cheaters have evolution advantage because they expand less energy on producing IA or fixing nitrogen from the non-cheaters, giving them more energy to seek resources and reproduce, and therefore increasing their fitness. Due to this advantage, the bacterial product, uh, population will exhibit a higher cheating frequency in subsequent generations. This results in less nitrogen fixation in the plant's root nodules, which will cause the plant to reduce the carbon compound release in response. Hope that was helpful. Remember, H5 was just assessed by all.